configuring services. <laughs> Thank you, Dan. Hi, guys. It's back. It's good to see all of you here. Um, my name is Yuyin. I'm a back-end developer, and um, I write code uh, for television systems. Most recently, I've been doing a lot of microservices, and the challenge with microservices is there are plenty of them, lots and lots of them. So I want to be able to write code once that works in many different environments, that works on my local development laptop, that works in the staging and test server, that works in production. Um, and obviously, when I'm in the local environment, or development environment, I use my development database. Uh, typically, you've got stateful applications, so you talk to your development database, in production, you talk to a production database, which is scaled appropriately. And certain other customers may have different requirements for their deploy time requirements. So there needs to be a way to configure your build, your binary, to be able to run effectively in all those environments. So this is something that all of us know or all of us should know. It's the flag library from the standard library package, and it provides command line flags. Um, if you use Unix at all, it is dash n, dash x, dash whatever option equals whatever configuration. So to use the flag library, it's something like this. Uh, here I'm declaring two uh, parameters, a string, and uh, integer. The string is called Go Environment, development or production. And the integer, well, let's say it's for the number of servers. And using the flag package is quite nice because it allows you to configure a default. So this string dev here is a default value for the Go ENV uh, flag. And then the one over here is a default value for the number of servers. So if I run this, I love Go Present because it allows you to run presentations. If I run this, it tells me, it compiles the program in the back end, and it tells me I'm in a dev environment with one server without specifying any flags at all. So that's the Go dev. Uh, sorry, the Go flag package. Now, the flag package is nice. Let, let me drop to the command line. I think everybody can see. So, if I do that, it tells me I, I basically just did everything which I did just now. But if I do this, built-in help, it's really nice. It tells me if I specify the env flag, the default is dev, and num server flag, the default is one. If I say env equals go meet up, I will say I'm in a go meetup environment with one server. If I say num server, I don't want to put the equal sign. You can. Five servers. It says go meet up environment, five servers. Those of you coming from the Unix world like double dashes, it's fine. The Go flag library handles double dashes equally well. So that's the flag library. It's very good, um, but I don't use it a lot. Why is that? Well, the problem is sensitive data. What do you do with passwords? You don't put passwords on the command line, do you? If you do, don't do it. It's dangerous. Why? Because PS and top listings will show the password in clear text to anybody else using the system. And my friend Kai uses AWS on the web all the time. right? His 
fellow user get to see his password if it's in the same virtual subnet. Anyway, let's, I digress. You should not put passwords in the command line. So what do I do? What should we do? The classic solution is to put sensitive data like passwords in the environment. So Go has a tool to pull stuff in from the environment. It's in the OS package and the command is get environment, get env. So if I run this program, I say my password is between quotes, that password from the environment. If I run this program because my environment is not set, my password is empty. So I actually need to export my password into the environment. So let's, let's do that. Um, too lazy to type everything, so I'll just copy and paste. If I export that into my environment, password is now in the environment. My password. And if I run that, it says my password is my password. So that's really nice. And it's all for free uh, if you pull in the OS package. However, I've lost something. Well, I don't have to specify command line flags anymore, just stick them into the environment. But I've lost the ability to specify a default value, and I really like my default values. And no more built-in help. Uh, um, if I do something like this, because I didn't build help in my Go program, it goes, uh, I don't know what to do. It doesn't give you any built-in help. <laughs> So, being a good developer, like all developers do, I wrote my own tool. It's, it's a really, really silly, stupid two-line tool, but it's a tool nonetheless. Um, it's called default. Uh, it's in my GitHub account. And the way I use default, DFLT, the way I use default is I pull in the password environment variable from the environment and if it is not set I create a default password so my new password and if I run this it says my new password because in this particular environment pass P A S S W D was not set so I now have my defaults again so let's Unset password. Password is no longer set. If I run the program again, okay, my password is empty. If I export a different password, and I run the program, there it is. So I now have a way of putting sensitive data in the environment. Using my two-line package, I can pull in strings from the environment and have a default value if the environment variable is not set. So I use that all the time in my code. Literally all the time. Default also handles integers. Um, the two most used data types, strings and integers. I never bothered writing a float. So it's open source. You're going to extend it if you want. So if I run this, so let's try to say, log fatal, if, if there's an error in num server environment, if it's not an integer, it will crash and say, sorry, I'm expecting an integer, you didn't give me an integer. If I run this, it still runs, I have one server. But let's, uh, let's run this with something weird. Num server equals A. Ah, uh, sorry. A is obviously not an integer. Integer. Bad num num server A. So let's fix it. Oh, by the way, this is a different way of sticking stuff into the environment. You don't have to permanently export it to the environment, 
this environment variable lives just for the duration of the program invocation, for those of you who are new to this. Num server equals 34. Oh, favorite number, 42, the answer to everything. So I have 42 servers. So now with my silly default package, I can pull in strings, I can pull in integers from the environment. And like I said, I've been doing lots and lots of uh, microservices and my deployment environment, my production environment is a Kubernetes cluster. Uh, deploying to Kubernetes is wonderful. I mean, it just works. The problem is the configuration files. They look like this. They are nasty. And not only are they nasty and long and confusing to read, there's lots and lots and lots of duplication. Uh, my app is called DRC Frontend Local. The name is DRC Frontend Local. It's uh, repeated here and that's repeated again. So that's lots and lots of repetition. So if I want to make a change, I've got to make a change in many, many, many places. So I'm lazy. All good developers are lazy. So what can I do? I looked at the Kubernetes community and they have a tool called Helm. And Helm is a fantastic tool. Um, it's a package manager for Kubernetes. Like Yum is a package manager for Red Hat and CentOS. APT is a package manager for Ubuntu. Helm is a package manager for Kubernetes. But Kubernetes is big. Uh, and heavyweight, and frankly, that's too much. But I liked one thing about Helm. Um, it used Go templates. So I wrote my own Go template substitutor, 15 lines of code. It's also on GitHub. And I call it config apply, CFG apply. So that's the tool. And how I use the tool? Well, you may notice these curly braces over here. Um, that's, that's the way, go, actually it's double curly braces. That's just a, just, just a comment. That's the way Go templates work. Those double curly braces are substituted. So anyway, my configuration file is this strange three, three dashes. It says the start of a new YAML document. Um, the DRC front end name is called DRC front end. The version is version 27. And the database is called the clean asset database. And, well, I went into edit mode. I didn't want to do that. Page down, go out. Okay. So let's look at some of the files and look at what config apply does. Okay, um, let's look at configuration local. So you've already seen this. I'm just showing you in full color. Okay. That's the small YAML configuration file which I hold. Um, uh, I shouldn't have gone out. Let me. Okay, on the left hand side is the production environment. On the right hand side is my local laptop development environment. Notice anything different? The structure is mostly the same, but the values have changed. The host path is host 2 instead of Minikube, the NFS server has a different IP address, etc, etc. But the structure is the same. And I only have one place to change stuff. So if I decide to update the front end to version 28, I change it here. And I can leave the production at a different uh, version number. Really nice and neat. Okay. 
Let's look at the deployment template, the really ugly Kubernetes deployment template. There's no getting around it. It's ugly. It's th that's the way it is. But I now see a whole bunch of these places where I can substitute stuff in. So config DRC front end name is my DRC front end name. And it's substituted with a stage here. This file is written once. When I need to extend it, I extend it once, and I don't ever touch it again. The configuration file is the one I touch. But Kubernetes cannot use this file as it stands. So what can I do? Config apply. So let's run config apply. The way to run config apply, let me make sure I can remember how to do it. Anyway, I'll just copy, I'm too lazy. Is config apply the local configuration because I'm generating a local configuration deployment against the deployment template? Uh, it spits out to standard out, so I have to redirect it to a file, which I will call deploy local. Go runs lightning fast. And now everything is filled in properly. And I can use this for my Kubernetes deployment. How about my production environment? That's all I change. And when I view my production environment, there, it's production. And that's what I do in configuring my deployments for Kubernetes. Questions, comments? I was going to say, I, I remember this shell to n subs. Yep. Uh, I, 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 I just love writing my tiny little 15 line script. Uh, sometimes I. Package, so yeah. I, I would probably use something like yours, actually. Yeah. Actually, I was talking to Patrick, right? Sorry, I forget that name. Stanley. I was talking with Stanley during our pre-talk snack, and we're talking about deployment tools. Um, config apply is actually a vendor dependency in the tools I deploy. So I always have this wherever I push to. So that's why I like uh, Go. So wherever Go lives, I can actually compile that tool. And basically all it is, is mail merge. It's uh, substitute macro values. That's all I needed. So it's a 15 line piece of code, which I'm even quite shy to publish, but it works and that's the job. And default is even worse. I think it's three lines of code. But still, it works. Yes. Um, yeah, thanks for publishing Config Apply. In fact, I think I'll, I'll look at it because um, for our um, use case, yeah, we've been using set and it's quite messy. Um, yeah, I think this is a better, uh, this might be a better way. So yeah, I'll, I'll if, if you don't like it, just, uh, Write your own. <laughs> like I said, it's 15 lines of code. Look at my code, massage it, throw it away, make it yours. Yeah. You won't hurt my feelings. <laughs> uh, it's basically Go template. Yeah. It's basically Go templates with uh, a YAML dependency vendored in. So I use a, a YAML parser. Um, some people don't like YAML, some people like JSON um, for good reason, or some other people like TOML, T O M L. Um, I like YAML. You can serialize JSON to the YAML company. Yeah, you can. You can. Yeah. The, the problem with YAML is like Python, it's space sensitive. Yeah. Yeah, tabs can really mess you up. Right? 
The next speaker up is Kai. Yep. Um, what, are, what are those three dashes mean? They're just a spacer. Three